dear brothers and sisters, I have nothing to say. <laughs> Just enjoy uh, seeing your smiling face. That itself, you see, showing us you are the same human being. So then, actually, I'm waiting the real discussions. Hmm. Then, you see, not that one person is to speak something, uh, uh, but rather interaction, way, interaction. Uh, and through that way, I also uh, may get some new understanding through interaction. And uh, you also get some sort of new ideas, new experience. So I'm looking forward to serious discussions. At the beginning, I have nothing to say. Then, one thing, I always used to sleep nine hours sometimes 10 hours. Then morning, at least three hours, uh, some meditation, mainly analytical meditation, analyze. Firstly, where is I, myself? Then, uh, then everybody, I think yesterday, I think I, I was that. I think I didn't mention it. Now, some occasion, our meeting with scientists, uh, one sort of picture uh, show one very, very uh, in, as a infant child, six months old, language not yet developed. So the real human sort of uh, nature, more alive, not polluted or something. Mm -hmm. So when uh, that, I think yesterday I mentioned, not here. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So the one, one sort of cartoon, two young, Children play together, showing smile. And that picture show to that infant child smiling. And then another sort of picture, cartoon, two young children, negative attitude, one another, when the uh, six month old infant child and saw that expression of unhappiness. So then, so some scientists say, basic human nature is more compassionate. And then more serious sort of example, the person constant experience anger, hatred, actually eating our immune system. Whereas person keep more compassionate mind, very, very helpful to maintain immune system. So these are the scientists uh, through their experiment, uh, they found that. So then they say basic human nature is more compassionate. When I heard that, I really felt now there is hope. Uh, and then, I think obviously, children. Uh, many years ago, in Switzerland, pathology or something, there are some Jewish, Israeli children, Palestinian children, live together and play together. So, at that level, they don't care. 
coordination, what faith, but just human, human brothers, sisters. So therefore, uh, at the young age, basic human sort of nature more alive. Once they join education field, then in education, uh, making distinction, political reason or spiritual reason and some other sort of reason make distinction. Then these young children uh, gradually develop the sense of we and they. So that kind of education, I think, instead of helping human being keep more alive, basic human nature, compassion, but rather oh, too much sort of because oh, of the discrimination, way, discrimination, we and they. So the existing education system not adequate. No, must pay more attention to how to keep basic human nature, that's compassion. Although these things, other animals also have, you see, that more compassionate feeling, at least towards their own immediate sort of circle. Now we have this brain, so use this brain uh, through education we can extend sense of concern of others' well-being, not only your own small circle people, but eventually entire uh, human being. As a Buddhist, you see, we all say, as an entire sentient being. So, so then, that kind of sort of, sort of, sort of thinking, educate, then basic human value there, then this brain you see, should help to further uh, say the, uh, strengthening, uh, uh, strengthening. So that's lacking now. In spite of basic human nature, wonderful, compassionate, but once joined education, not talking these values, but rather talking some other sort of thing. And then mainly, I think modern life, because of that kind of education, I think of very much materialistic life. And with that materialistic culture, materialistic culture, we always look external thing. Some sports, you get some sort of happiness or something. Uh, then hearing music. You see, never sort of emphasis without relying on a sensorial sort of consciousness, just uh, mind, mental, uh, try to train that level. And sensorial experience is just also the way to bring information, but real joyfulness, not with sensorial experience, but mental experience. So therefore, ancient Indian knowledge about mind, or training of mind, like shamatha and vipassana, not training our sensorial thing, but mental thing. So, so now, although these so the information, shamatha, uh, vipassana, these come from religious text. Now we should take this as an academic subject. Yesterday I mentioned as a sort of uh, knowledge how to bring inner peace. Not talking next life, not talking nirvana, not talking God or Buddha. <laughs> like that. So I'm expecting now some serious discussion now. Yeah. Seal Nona from the Queensland University of Technology in Australia. You know, in India we had this whole tradition of education institutions where we used to say that the institutions are the seat of education and learning. 
and with the learning we used to get a lot of human values and the human touch. Over a period of time we see that the learning has come out and the institutions are becoming only the seat of education. The question is, what is gone wrong where the learning has come out from education and what can be done to bring the learning back to education institutions so that we are able to imbibe the human values? Kursa. Your Holiness, you want to respond right now? What yes. has gone wrong in our learning that we have taken out the training of mind and listening to the soul out of our learning exercise? Of course, my knowledge is limited. But it seems to me the so-called modern education starts from the West. I think yesterday also I already mentioned so the people, you see, when science and technology develop, that brings benefit or comfort immediately. Uh, prayer, maybe long future, <laughs> but not much helpful immediately. So therefore, people very much excited about material development. So, uh, I feel education mainly focusing about material development. This is my feeling. I think the answer is very straight. The connect is to be discovered and restored. We have the Honorable Vice Chancellor over there, please. Good morning, sir. I'm Dr. Vivek Sauji from uh, Be Belgaum. Sir, Your Holiness, Yesterday in your speech, you yes. mentioned about uh, emotional hygiene and you said that we practice physical hygiene but we don't practice emotional hygiene and from the speakers, we've heard that fear, frustration, anger, some of these are the issues which have been really taking toll on all of us. So how can we practice emotional hygiene and is there anything, I mean we would like to learn more about it from your holiness. Sir, how to practice emotional hygiene and that too in a manner that we can practice in five minutes. Now, some you see people, some scientists like Paul Ekman hmm, now identify certain different emotions. Uh, that's helpful. Now, in ancient Indian psychology, I think the very, very detailed explanation about uh, different minds. Some the symptoms can disagree. Mind and mental factors. Okay, mind and mental So mind, usually we say six minds. And then according to Chitta Mantra, eight minds. Then Kasa, Simjum. Mental factor, uh, 51. And some text even more. So this very very useful. You see the the emotions yeah, are one of them. So how it develop and what kind of connection within these different mental factor. Madam sitting next to the honorable so, vice chancellor. So now important is mm, as an academic subject. Uh, I think uh, very useful to study in textbook about these uh, also the, because of the mind. Oh. And then also the uh, sensory level consciousness that occur only awaking time. Then during dreaming time, another level of consciousness. Sensorial consciousness no longer, but mental consciousness still there. Then deep sleep without dream, more deeper. Then it faint, a time of faint, even deeper consciousness. Now, some American scientists now uh, carry some project 
so the investigation at the time of death, physically death, uh, heart beating stop, brain activity stop, death, but body still remain fresh. So the only explanation is the subtle mind, innermost the subtle mind still in the center of channel. So these, I think, quite useful uh, for uh, so the academic subject, and that very useful for hygiene of emotion. Mental hygiene very important. Madam asked a straight question to the honourable Holiness, sir. Shout at the top of your voice because we are already shouting in our classrooms. I, I think better Melvom. Compassion Otherwise, in your speech. Oh yes. So I would like to uh, hear from you about. Uh, the gender disparity and violence against two women, young girls, and even killing the uh, female feticide in our educated, civilized society, that happens more. We should be more concerned about being educated, and it still persists. Ah. It's a ground reality, social reality. I would like to seek your views on this. Another thing is that in our modern education system, because of digitalization, we are losing human touch. Yesterday, we were discussing classroom teacher-student relationship is declining, and we are gaining knowledge from digital world. So less of human touch, how can we encourage human compassion? How can competition and compassion go together? That is what I would like How to... How can compassion and competition go together, His some, Holiness? Some, some different points now. Discrimination, male and female. I think they like a farming system, these things. Physically, male, more sort of kasoda, useful. So in ancient time, so some kind of discrimination. That even, you see, uh, influence or effect in religious field. But then uh, Buddha make very much emphasis equal, male and female. Bhikshu, the highest sort of vow or celibate. And then similarly, Bhikshu Ni. So in any way, uh, uh, our society, I think still old thinking, traces, traces of old thinking. Now, for example, in this country, unfortunately, caste system uh, still there. I think these, I think the, the certain sort of tradition come from feudal system. Now, feudal system gone. Now we we are at the, at the time democratic sort of society. Everybody equal. Under law, from president or becker, same. So, uh, India's constitution uh, give us equal right, but in backward area still caste system still there. These, I think, through education, and mainly, I feel, religious leader should come out now say. Uh, this discrimination on the basis of caste system is outdated. So this is some. So similarly, male, female, and and I think basically, the male need female, female need male, equal. Thank you, sir. We have the next question from uh, and then, Vice Chancellor. Then I'll come to Madam. Then, yes, please. Then you know, mother is female. Mother is, I think, the ultimate source of love, compassion. As soon as we're born, without mother's love, we no longer there, we die. So, very our life survived with uh, 
parents' care, particularly mother's care and mother's milk. So in the society, mother is the ultimate source of also compassion, love. So I often use it telling uh, the now education alone, existing education alone, not sufficient. We must make more effort for promotion of compassion. In that respect, female should take more active role. Very good. If love is God, we need to understand love is Atmita. Otherwise, that love will come something else. So, next question from the professor, sir. Sita Ramarao. Uh, His Holiness, uh, I would like to know from you, sir. Uh, so far, human civilization underwent agricultural revolution, industrial revolution, te technological revolution, and IT revolution. So, going on. Nanotechnology revolution also may come in future. But it is mentioned about the spiritual revolution in the human kind, human humanity. What is spiritual revolution? How it should be brought in in the society and world as a whole? This is my question, sir. I would is like. Is there to. any scope for a spiritual revolution along with information technology revolution and the revolution of the fifth generation science and technology? It is very important to make distinction spirituality. Uh, with religious belief and another spirituality, just secular ethics. Oh. You see, these, I think, now religious matter to religious people. Hmm? Sometimes they use wrong way. <laughs> I think one famous news, the uh, one spiritual leader in Haryana, now in prison. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes, you see, the spiritual spirituality with faith sometimes you see become instrument exploitation. I think that uh, no need to human being. The other hand, the essence of various spiritual tradition. The essence message is message of love. Now that, so long we human beings remain on this planet with sophisticated mind, human love is very essential. So yeah. now, the religious, I mean spirituality with religious faith, not adequate. So, now we need thousand year old Indian tradition, secular. Well, we will thresh out this question further whether spirituality is secular because spirituality is considered to be beyond religion. But we have shortage of time and I can see hundred cents going up. One question. Difficult task is how do I assimilate? I Madam, very quickly in ten seconds, your question. I'll come to you in a minute. I have three no, questions in I my raised, hand. I raised my no, hand. No, 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 no. Let Madam speak. Acha. Please. Yeah, please. Move the... Move the microphone quickly, as fast as possible. Well, very quickly, and a question not just for students, but from uh, also the personal context. Uh, when we talk of introducing compassion, which was missing in the education because of the Western influence, what we also mean is that we have to make space for it. That means the Western, the technical, the scientific uh, education becomes a bit slower. I, as a student, am likely to accept an education like that if I see that after learning this new bit that is being introduced in my system, that's how a student sees the syllabus, I will still get something that I want to get and I will reach somewhere that I want to reach. And then for me as a student to accept the new system, I need to have faith. And I think today's concern and the big concern is that, that faith is something I don't... Main point, consider. your question, main point? Faith, faith. Faith, to be able to experiment, introducing compassion in education. I, as a student, I, as a teacher, lack the faith. Now, I feel time come. The promotion, or basis of promotion of, of compassion, uh, instead of based on religion, but based on science. 
You know, scientific finding, as I mentioned before, the scientist you now who sort of carries some sort of observation or research, basic human nature is more compassionate. Uh, and then, I think as far as the Buddha, Buddhism is concerned, Buddha himself, you see, emphasis importance of reason, experiment, rather than faith. So therefore, I think today, in past, you see, we sort of rely on our guru. Now I think better to rely on scientist. Good. Now what I will do, <laughs> His Holiness will answer together all the questions. I have two questions to read out, then I will ask my two vice chancellors also to say. One of the questions, His Holiness is, how do you spread happiness in the rural areas where people are suffering and having tremendous amount of unhappiness? Another question from the learned vice chancellor is, uh, this one, how one can balance between materialism, which means prosperity, and happiness. How do I balance that? That's the second question from one of the vice chancellors. And I've got two more vice chancellors raising hands. Uh, I think wait, 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 wait. Uh, too many questions together, uh, not remain in my mind. <laughs> so, out of compassion to me, I think let me answer after each compassion, okay. uh, each question. Okay. Yes, now. Professor Ramachandran. I think rural area. I think now rural area is still lacking education. So maybe some faith there, but this faith is uh, blind faith, uh, not much thinking. So these blind faith will not remain. Eventually, better education these uh, will go. So now the. Uh, rural area, I think education is the key factor. Okay. Uh, very good morning, sir. In the area of globalization, everybody they accept globalization. Country borderless people are accepted everywhere in the world. And people of various linguistics discriminations are also permitted to sir. some extent. But not so question, question, now question point. Yeah, I'm coming to that. You said female, uh. is, e female is equal to male. We totally agree on that. How to bring them into practice? How do you practice, sir, that woman is equal to man? That's or even, even better than man, I mean. That's the, like that. that is based on conviction. If compassion remains lip service, then will not carry action, in action. The, through analyze, through explanation, on the basis of scientific finding, once you really develop conviction, ah, compassion is really uh, so the immense help uh, to my peace of mind and through that way, physical health and a happy family, happy community. Then action come. Compassion so long remain because of the lip service, then not much effect. You have to train your mind for compassion, otherwise it will remain lip service, sir. Yes. Honorable Vice Chancellor. Yes. <laughs> Myself, Professor Hari Singh, Vice Chancellor, Jay Prakash University, Chapra Bihar. My direct question is whether it is proper to say waste, W-E-S-T, whether West is W-A-S-T and then we say that secular ethics. It is very contradictory. Ethics is sufficient. The moment we prefix secular, again we are making a new sect. Ethics itself is sufficient. The maturity of the ethics is secular in its temperament. So, sir, we have to think that this is not the age of disruption. It is a pessimistic approach to perceive and see that the whole era is disruptive. Neither the technology is disruptive. It is the mind of the people, the mind of the men, 
that is disruptive. Very so good, east is point. east, west is west. This dichotomy should also be now removed from the mind with along the ethical maturity. Yes, sir. Not clear. Point, huh? point is well taken, sir. But if you say ethics only, people say whose ethics are they? And I will need trouble to answer that because they will say they belong to you, may not belong to me. That's why the word secular. It's not for adulterating ethics. It's not for diluting the importance okay. of ethics. Huh? But his yeah. Every, every uh, human action is related with motivation. Any action, including preaching, with the motivation, with selfish or some kind of negative emotion. And every human action, including teaching or dharma, also become destructive. So ultimately, and every human profession, in order to become constructive, related with mind, emo motivation. That's how I feel. The motivation, too much self-centered motivation, uh, actually, the very nature of selfish is narrow-minded. Thinking yourself. The compassionate mind think other. So automatically, mind becomes more open. Just a selfish, think yourself. Very narrow-minded. And with that narrow-minded, even small problem appears as the unbearable. More compassionate attitude, even serious problem uh, you have, to, you will have to have the feeling. Oh, this is problem. Have to solve. But not only this problem, but there are many positive things there. So, compassionate mind, open our mind. The holistic attitude develop. The self-centered attitude uh, in only kasa. The, the, the narrow mind, the focusing, very very narrow. Area. And then I think I want to mention one my friend, one scientist, Aaron Beck, now over 100 years old. He, not a religious mind, minded, you see, he uh, see the, the helping people whose uh, mind too much sort of disturbed by anger. Now he, uh, when I met his age already, 84, uh, he mentioned when people develop anger, the, the object which that person feels angry appears very negative, but actually 90% of that negativeness is mental projection. So, therefore, in that respect, quantum physics is very useful. Right. You see, to, to reduce the very basis of exaggeration. As far as Buddha Dharma is concerned, Buddhist philosophy is concerned, Shunyata, the concept of Patit Samupad, everything interdependent, no absolute. So, that reduces the intensity of anger. Like that. So therefore, the uh, now even scientists now, now the, 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 that scientist I think really experienced one. So destructive emotion develop is much based on exaggeration. And now recently, one Chinese in China, one Chinese uh, uh, quantum physicist, he mentioned that. Those scientists who really convinced quantum physics, their sort of the very basis of mental exaggeration, much thinner. This is a scientific explanation. Marve, this one. Honorable Vice Chancellors, I am already committing a breach of Western ethics where time allotted should not be exceeded by more than five minutes if you are in India. Now I've already exceeded 10 minutes. So my left brain was totally dead for a time. Suddenly I find that it has come to life. So last question, Professor Isaac, 
if you yeah if you one do second. not mind i think yeah because the time is very short yeah i'll just uh, brief it once you see i hail from kerala uh, kerala is 100 percent literate state you find that uh, the discrimination based on sex the fights based on caste system are all diminishing decreasing trend that's what you said that education will definitely improve it but today i find that political animosity fights and killings are on the increase chusi ghasa sir has already answered shake off those traditions which have become outdated <laughs> as simple as that Uh, last question, sir, from the Secretary General. I, I think you have to do justice, otherwise I will not earn my TA bill. I, I think, <laughs> this, uh, uh, I think, uh, if possible, you set up one small sort of society uh, to teach about this mental system to politicians. <laughs> your, your Holiness, I often find myself in a dilemma. as to how to understand this phenomena and this phenomena is that at times i find people at individual level very compassionate very understanding very respectful of a variety of culture but at a collective level in a group at a national level they are not as compassionate what is this and how do we explain this this is very clear very clear these leaders come from a society where because of the education not much talking about inner value so these individual come from that kind of society that kind of education so naturally more selfish short sighted like that so only thing uh, today's problem basically 7 billion human being uh, no one has one problem yet many problem of course a nature disaster this is something different beyond our control but many problem essentially our own creation why nobody want a problem but m- human being themselves create a lot of problem why lack of moral principle that lack of conviction about these uh, altruistic sort of attitudes value the so man. now education is the key factor right. through pray will not change only through education awareness now gradually i think one generation pass the second generation who come through uh, that kind of education then there is a real hope very good so training of the mind and listening to the soul require mass exercise for yoga and meditation not just individual one now we are really run out of time but you can kindly very quickly tell us because you are standing for some time honorable vice chancellor very I, mean, i have to bind up because otherwise i'll be thrown out but maybe i'm protected by his holiness till he is there on the on the dais His Holiness, I am Dr. B. P. Virabhadrappa from Davangere University, Karnataka, Southern India. In the days of liberalisation, education has been commercialised, either in the West or in the East, and spiritual values and religious values are fading away. Yesterday you talked about dharma. Yesterday you talked about values, but what has actually happened in the days of globalisation and liberalisation? because of the commercialization of higher education values are declining social values yeah. religious values right. and spiritual values kindly uh, that is mainly please. education or existing education is very much oriented about material value not much talk about inner value therefore now we are uh, making effort or oh, to for the day uh, the the education should include about inner value then as i mentioned earlier next generation who come through that kind of education then i think uh, society not a materialistic society materialistic culture uh, society uh, of course 
need material value, but at the same time, also you say look from internal value. Then I think things, politics, politics or economy or many fields, then becoming more, I say, the peaceful or more honest, more truthful. So Com this is no, no, not not sufficient to complain these things. Uh, now we have to think uh, the long term. That I believe only education. The education, existing education, only oriented about uh, uh, material value, like that. Integration of education with values holds the promise. Last word from Go East policy from the Nehu Vice Chancellor, Professor Srivastava. We have heard about Buddham, Sharanam, Gachan. It will be a pleasure to all of us and learning experience from you to hear about it from you, Your Highness. Karsa. Buddham, Sharanam, Gachan. Could you please elaborate the message which is closely connected with the present theme of the yeah. I think the very word Buddha means negative things completely kasoda ka eliminated. Uh, then the very nature of our mind have the uh, have the pot have the potential or ability to know things. So long ignorance there our knowing limited. Once ignorance completely disappear, then the nature's full potential knowing everything. So that means, that means Buddha, eliminate uh, ignorance and then fully say, develop all the potential of mind. That's meaning of Buddha. Now important is, the, I think in, as far as Buddha Dharma is concerned, now it is important. Buddha not come from outside. But our very nature of our mind is Buddha nature. Tata Gata Garba or Sugata Shindaya. So this very mind at the moment dominant by ignorance. Once ignorance removed, that very sort of nature of this mind becomes Buddha's mind. <laughs> but not easy. Uh, saying easy, within a uh, few years you may achieve Buddhahood, but it seems nobody achieved that within that short period. <laughs> but as a Buddhist practitioner, student of Nalanda tradition, not just faith, but analyze, 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 uh, analytical meditation, according to my own experience, immense effect on my own emotion. It's very clear. Every emotion based on ignorance, the opposition of emotion, that's wisdom, based on reason. So, wisdom has much more powerful than uh, Ignorance, ignorance, because I'm sorry, destructive emotion, destructive emotion, no valid base. Oh, the wisdom side, valid base. So we can, we can strengthen that, uh, not day by day, but decade by decade, we can increase the power of wisdom side. So more deeper experience about wisdom the opposite ignorance automatically reduce. Once ignorance reduce, all destructive emotion which based on ignorance and then become thinner, thinner, thinner. Thank you, Your Holiness.